inside the biggest trends in digital advertising. And Tribune Publishing is now trunk. No, 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 really trunk. This is episode 43, the trunk episode of Media Unplugged, the podcast that goes behind the spin to reveal what's really happening in media. Media Unplugged with Tom A. Sacker and Mark Ramsey. Welcome to Media Unplugged. I'm Mark Ramsey. And I'm Tom A. Sacker. Tom, inside the biggest trends in digital advertising, what could I be talking about but the infamous annual or is it biannual Mary Meeker Internet Trends Report? Um, a slide deck consisting of approximately 4 million slides <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of insight about what's going on in digital advertising. Let me touch on a couple of bullets here, and you just jump in and tell me what you think as I, as I, as I canvas these. Okay. Internet advertising in the U.S. has grown by about 20% since last year, reaching $60 billion. Two-thirds of that growth has come from an increase in spending on mobile ads. Hmm. Mobile's where it's at, Tom. That's what she says. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I like the very, we, you, you know, you skip the very first slide, the one with the, with, actually the one with the first piece of information. No. And that thing, listen, so she says there are now about 3 billion global internet users, but user growth is stalling at about 9% year on year. So that sounds kind of like a little negative. And then I thought about it and I said, wait a minute. There's about 7 billion human beings on the planet. <laughs> and scientists believe the Earth has a maximum carrying capacity of 9 to 10 billion people. <laughs> so the World Wide Web was invented in like 1989. So in less than 30 years, one third of the maximum carrying capacity of human beings use the Internet. Ah, that's yeah. It doesn't seem like enough of an opportunity. To well, see, I I thought you were going to go beyond that and start doing the math on what happens when you uh, increase uh, three billion nine percent year on year and take that out a few years and see how long that takes to get to the current capacity, <laughs> which know, isn't that just, long. It's the sentiment. It's the overall sentiment of the report. It's like, well, it's the end of the internet ride. <laughs> It's only 9%. If any of us had anything growing at 9%, how's your portfolio doing, Tom? Is no, it growing at 9%? No, no. Listen, you know what? My <laughs> bank now charges me for them to hold my money in the bank. That is the, you want to hear weird. That's what's going on with my, my uh, return on investments. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing you they're doing you a favor it's, <laughs> it's it's all that weight all that money exactly so let's talk about this report then other than that point uh <laughs> internet advertising is overwhelmingly now coming from mobile facebook's yearly advertising revenue is up 59 percent, growing much faster than google's last year of 18 percent. still they're both way up and if you and if you notably facebook up 59 google up 18 all others tom up 13 which no. means that, you know, it, it's, and if you look at the actual quantity, it's not just the rate of change. You can see that all others is somewhere between Facebook and Google. But you have to look at that and say, all others? <laughs> well, all means... others freaked out and ran everything through Facebook and Google. I mean, <laughs> now they're doing that. That's right. Right? Yeah, I don't know. So, some, of, some, of the, some of what she writes about makes sense. And then there's things in there that I start reading. And I say, okay, I understand the data. But the analysis doesn't seem right to me. Like, for example, she said that there's a $21 billion untapped opportunity for U.S. brands right. to catch up with how people consume media by shifting more to mobile advertising. Now, let's clarify what that means. What she's saying there is if you take a look at the percentage of media time being spent on mobile versus the percent of advertising inventory or investment being addressed to mobile, there's a 21, what amounts to a $21 billion difference. <laughs> okay. All right. But that's like the shoe salesman who's visiting Africa. He calls back the head office excited and says, oh, awesome opportunity. No one here wears shoes. Maybe we don't want more advertising on our mobile devices. Maybe that's why ad blocking software is skyrocketing. Well, and we're going to talk about that, too. But to your point, I think it's a very real question. It's one we've talked about in this podcast before, which is just because there's a difference in usage versus advertising doesn't necessarily imply that there should be an equal flow of advertising to match the usage. I mean, that, 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 that statistic doesn't necessarily apply because 
other issues come into play. The heritage of the platform, the, uh, the, 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 how the platform fits into the advertising ecosystem, right. um, how easy it is to display advertising of any form on that platform, the desire to which, as you say, consumers will uh, bear advertising on that platform. All of these come into play, and mobile is certainly a challenging environment. That's right. That's why calling it an, quote, unquote, untapped opportunity were the wrong words to use, I think, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of the equivalent of saying, look, you're all idiots. <laughs> yeah, everything should be moving to mobile. What are you waiting for? <laughs> well, there's there are other statistics in here about uh, online advertising, and you have to review these with the knowledge that increasingly we're talking about mobile. And this was fascinating to me, although not at all surprising. Online video ads, she says, are ineffective. Imagine that, Tom. <laughs> 81% of people surveyed mute video ads. And that's a little deceptive in that a lot of video advertising comes muted. You have to you actually have to unmute it, right. not mute it, right? I don't know that that many people actually mute it. They just choose not to unmute it. 62% are annoyed by pre-roll ads, which I think rounds to 100. <laughs> and 92% have considered using ad blocking software. And I, again, it's not that this is new necessarily because, you know, I mean, what this adds up to is the insight that people are irritated and annoyed by advertising, which shouldn't surprise any of us. But it is maybe for the first time truly quantifiable. I think it's safe to say that even on television, when you and I were kids, we were irritated by ads unless they were selling something we wanted. But now, finally, that irritation is quantifiable. The question is, what does that mean for the future of advertising on these platforms? Hmm. Look, I, I don't know, Mark. I mean, it, it may mean that the boom times for mobile ads is ending. I mean, look, the boom times for apps has ended. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many apps per month? I just read this. The average American smartphone user downloads. Now, this is according to Comscore's new mobile app report. Okay, so this is, this is me, an average user, downloading an average number of apps per month, whether or not I use them, whether or not I use old ones, but it doesn't, there's no churn reference, right? It doesn't nope. talk about what I get rid of. No, all it Only says is I, how many apps per month the average American smartphone user downloads. Okay, what is it? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Look it up. That's what it reported. So basically what it's saying is, oh, okay, I just, I downloaded the Uber app. Okay, I got that now. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't need any more apps. My problems have been so. I don't know about you, but my wife thinks I'm crazy because I'm flipping through the phone to find one single solitary app, and I just can't find it for all the noise on my phone and the <laughs> idea of taking all these apps. The one apps you need. It's like, my, uh, it's like my toolbox trying to that's find right. that one screwdriver. That is right. And the <laughs> idea of taking all these apps and grouping them into handy little organized folders I mean, the prospect of doing that just irritates me to no end. And when I see people with phones with handy little folders on, uh, forget it. I'm All not right. doing that. So let me touch on some other stuff here. Um, the rising Snapchat generation. Millennials communicate with text. But Generation Z, for those not in the know, that means people younger even than millennials hmm. prefer to communicate with images. So, Tom, we've gone from, I guess, written word long form <laughs> to text messaging to images. In other words, as a, as a species, we began with cave drawings, and that's where we're ending. <laughs> that's true. We, we went from <laughs> cave drawings to UG, which is text messaging, <laughs> and now we're going backwards. <laughs> now, this is interesting to me. One of the points, the brand power with Facebook Live, when the so-called Chewbacca mom, and I'm not going to go into that, you oh, know what yeah. that is. I know. Mentioned retailer Kohl's twice in her viral video. The store's app shot to the top of the downloads chart in the U.S. iOS app store. Um, when you add that with the statistic you just read to me, who knows who's downloading that Kohl's app? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's certainly not the average user. And then who knows who's using it? That's Well, that's a whole... No one's interested in asking that question that's if you true. notice. That's true. Messaging apps are moving from simple text tools to communicate with friends to platforms for commerce. We'll talk more about that. Uh, generation Y is the first generation to prefer chatting over the web or social media to talk to businesses rather than over the phone because nobody likes to use the phone. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. No, in but here that that's one, really that one's big, Mark. I mean, if, if any of them, and we mentioned this on a previous show, the rising use of chat technology in business. I, I mm -hmm. think that anyone listening to this show that that's in business, 
they have to understand how time starved people are. We do not want to sit on the telephone That's with right. service reps any longer. We want to just type in our problem, have somebody solve it, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, or whatever that saying right. is. That's what we want. So give it to us. Well, that's right. Um, I agree with that, and I would favor that as well. I think that the, the challenge is it's not just about customer service, which is the application you're talking about. It's all forms of chat-based marketing. In fact, there's a point in her presentation where uh, essentially she says, chat is the future. Brands are increasingly embracing bots and chat-based marketing. Now, you know, just so it's clear, chat-based marketing, that's bots. Right. That's, a, that's an automated, simulated person on the so you take you know as irritated as you are by the phone tree that you get when you dial the 800 number right now you're getting a bot tree so well i but i'm not you know convinced what? we're trading something for something actually better <laughs> it depends it depends if those bots are more intelligent than those people we're calling <laughs> we can always hope <laughs> you're listening to media unplugged with tom asacker and mark ramsey Tribune Publishing is now trunk. No, really. This is unbelievable to me. This is from the Washington Post, the article by Eric Wemple. Tribune Publishing now trunk issues worst press release in the history of journalism. <laughs> Not that this person <laughs> has a perspective on this. Right. So we all know the story with Tribune. They're busy rebuffing the bid of Gannett to, uh, to buy the whole shebang. Um, and they decided in the, uh, in the midst of all that that they need to do something uh, significant and noteworthy with their digital platform. And uh, from the perspective of Mr. Wemple at the Washington Post, Tribune has lost its mind. <laughs> so here's their tweet. On June 20, we'll be trunk. Yep, trunk. That's T-R-O-N-C. Trunk, by the way, Tom, stands for Tribune Online Content. Let me read from the article. Or is this trunk press release renders it in smaller case, lowercase Tribune online content. So obsessed is the new rebranded company with the web's lowercase vibe that its press release starts various sentences that way, like trunk or Tribune online content captures the essence of the company's mission. <laughs> it's just hilarious. I, mean, I thought you were kidding. Listen, when you first sent I know this you over, did. I said, this is an onion thing. This is a spoof. He's, he's <laughs> fooling around. First of all, being from New England, when I hear Trunk, it's impossible for me not to think of Gronk, right? Rob Gronkowski, he's, the, he's that fun-loving <laughs> tight end for the Patriots. So I, I say, okay, what are his attributes? If I'm going to associate Trunk with Gronk, okay, he's big, he's talented, he's lovable. Those are key attributes for all media brands. But he's not the sharpest crayon in the box. <laughs> so for a media brand like Tribune, I'm not sure that's the association they're hoping for. Well, it just seems so <laughs> unnecessary, you know. I mean, to me, I'm not familiar with this particular sportsman. But to me, it sounds like a character in the Flintstones or well, you know, some... Well, is kind of like that. He's <laughs> some, some, some bad American international movie from the 50s, you know, Tronk, Teenage Caveman from Outer Space, something like that. I don't know who they... Can... Who came up with this? That's well, what listen, I... forget the actual name. Let's go to what the name represents, Tribune Online Content. Is that something you can say you're excited about? I mean, is that the place where you expect to find Game of Thrones, Tribune Online Content? I, I don't know. It, it, it sounds like nothing but a description. I mean... I, well, it... Well, that's exactly what it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a convenient description. A memo sent to colleagues Thursday afternoon by Chief Executive Justin Dearborn. Boy, is this guy getting some heat. Eases some fears. No, the Chicago Tribune won't become the Chicago trunk. Quote, importantly, this change does not impact the name of our proud and iconic brands, wrote Dearborn. It's nice to know the Tribune Publishing is evidently not one of those proud and iconic brands. Unbelievable. And here's how the piece goes on. I love this, and you're going to love this. Far worse than the name and punctuational idiosyncrasies is the direction in which Pharaoh is pushing the company. The vision calls for perhaps the most concentrated mess of buzzwords the digital publishing has ever seen. <laughs> Feast on this, quote, Trunk pools the company's leading media brands and leverages innovative technology to deliver personalized and interactive experiences to its 60 million users. All right. Trunk is focused on leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve the user experience and better monetize our world-class content in order to deliver personalized content to our 60 million monthly users and drive value for all our stakeholders. That's pretty Is funny. that amazing? No, it is. He's got every single buzzword <laughs> in two lines. It's beautiful. 
<laughs> I think my favorite part, though, about this article overall is that somehow in the first version, and they have a little correction at the bottom of it. I don't know if you saw this. This blog somehow called the Los Angeles Times the Los Angeles Tribune. <laughs> oh, man. man. How do you I, make I that mistake? I don't know. But what is it with people with the naming? Why don't they just do what, and who'd you say wrote this? Washington Post, right? Yes. Do what they've been doing since Bezos bought it. If you've been watching it, right, he goes in and it, it's all about strategy and setting the right tone. Respect mm-hmm. the past, relentlessly focus on building the future, which is the That's digital it. audience, right? Invest in journalism and technology. I mean, if you look, and I read this in October of 2015, this is going to blow your mind. The Post moved ahead of the New York Times in web traffic. Mm. They attracted 66.9 million unique visitors that month compared to 65.8 million for for the Times, a 59% increase for the Post over the previous year. And get this, this past February, this is according to Comscore, the Post received 890 million page views, beating not just the Times, but BuzzFeed too. Wow. That's what That's people great. need to be doing. Work on the, the fundamentals. Work right? on the fundamentals. Actually do it and don't play for the press release. It's so interesting. That reminds me of a story I heard once when, and I'm not going to mention names here, but a certain broadcaster decided that they would um, t- leverage the podcasting trend by launching a radio station uh, that consisted of nothing but podcasts, one after another, end to end. And they got lots of buzz out of it. Lots of news releases were issued and so on. And it was an AM station and nobody ever listened to it. And I remember talking with an executive from the company who was not involved in that decision who later told me, yeah, so-and-so who's responsible for that um, does it for the news release. I'm busy trying to raise the ratings of the radio station. (laughs) (laughs) So that's a perfect illustration of what you're describing, which is this this is clearly, this trunk thing is clearly a play uh, for uh, for PR, That's it. not uh, a play for substance. Yep. It's time for rants and raves, Tom. What do you have this week? Oh yeah, me right. Yeah, okay. I, I get. I don't know if this is a rant. I think it might be. But as we pointed out today, so the internet has matured. Uh, we're all apt out. So it's it's going to require a lot more passion and considered thought to come up with ways to connect technology with people in a meaningful way. All right. It's going to be a right. little harder. So as if by magic, Mark, I bumped into a company called. Chaotic Moon. They're a part of Accenture Interactive. And this is their company description. It says, we are a creative technology studio transforming business for the world's biggest brands by designing, developing, and delivering software products and digital experiences of consequence. Mm -hmm. And I said, perfect, perfect. And now, now listen to how I hear about these guys. It's from a press release about their breakthrough product called Notify. It's a pair of pants with an invisible user interface that will text you when you've forgotten to zip up your fly. (laughs) So there you go. Solving the world's greatest problems with technology because we're all either too drunk or too stupid to solve them for ourselves. (laughs) That's awesome. I, I... I'm happy to report I usually don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> good. Oh, wow. I don't even know where to go with that. There's so many directions. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, well, you know, the whole market for being digitally signaled that you've forgotten something is, you know, a big area. You know, all those little gadgets that you attach oh, to keys oh, and I stuff. Know, so you won't I read them. about somewhere they'll shock you if you don't do something. Or <laughs> God, help us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I've got a couple of uh, rants. I think they qualify as rants. And these are still from the theme of what the heck is going on with the advertising space in digital in digital land. Um, the first one, um, well, let's see. Let me back into this. As everyone knows, YouTube is heavily involved in online advertising. That's an understatement, right? Right. Um, and one of the areas in which they're heavily involved in is, of course, the uh, ever uh, popular pre-roll. So um, <laughs> there was an interview recently with the CEO of YouTube, Susan, I can't pronounce her name. Susan Wozicki, I think it's pronounced. Yeah, I think so. And um, 
Here's how the thing opens, the article opens. The ad-skipping temptations on YouTube's infamous pre-rolls can run high. Though the company's chief executive says she makes a point to keep an ear to the ground. Quote, I like watching the ads, and I think it's important for me to see the ad, she says, estimating that she skips pre-rolls, quote, maybe every other time. (laughs) (laughs) So there you go, YouTube advertisers. Even the person taking all your money and responsible for the growth of the company only can tolerate what you do, quote, (laughs) maybe, maybe every other time, Tom. That's pretty funny. I like that. So the other one's kind of related to that because it does raise the question, all these statistics, these statistics about ad blockers and people's uh, dissatisfaction with online advertising and even what the CEO of YouTube does on her very own (laughs) platform, they're very disconcerting to advertisers. The question is, well, how are we going to reach out and impact people in this space if not by traditional ads? There was a... um, uh, a video out about a week ago, and I'm sure you've seen this. Did you see the Lyft video with Shaquille O'Neal? I did not see that. Well, you're all familiar with Lyft. Lyft is that Uber alternative, right. the one that was most famous for having that stupid pink mustache on the front of the car right. up until last year, uh, guaranteeing that, among other things, not only would I not download the app, I would never be caught dead in one of their cars. Well, that's gone now, but still they have that kind of the runner-up problem, right? How do you achieve fame in the in the in the in the orbit of uh, a brand like Uber, and um, about a week ago, they released an amazing uh, video or set of videos. I'm not sure which it is, which is Undercover Lift with Shaquille O'Neal, where Shaquille dresses up in disguise as a Lyft driver and just carts people around town, telling them outrageous stories, talking about his favorite movie Kazam, which of course is a movie that starred Shaquille o- O'Neal in the mid '90s. And uh, it's just this hilarious thing. And he does the reveal at the end. And um, if you look at the statistics, you can see that, for, well, first of all, it got millions of, about 2 million views. It got tons and tons of earned media, all of which just pro, you know sang its praises. Um, and if you look at Google Trends, you can see I couldn't find exact statistics for what the consequence was for business for Lyft. But if you look at Google Trends, which is at least one proxy, you can see a big, big spike um, in the over the past couple of months, including the past, uh, uh, well, this one's just a week ago, but including the month of June, a huge spike in attention for Lyft. So in, an, in a world where you can't get attention because people are turning off or skipping or avoiding or, you know, doing whatever Susan at YouTube does to avoid the ads... <laughs> Um, here's a way that a brand gets attention for itself by entertaining folks, by spreading the word, by being worth sharing on social and through earned media. Um, and it occurs to me that doesn't that imply we're going to see more clever stuff like this in the future if these brands really want to make an impact in a world where people block their ads? No, that's, that's a really good point. And how in the hell do you disguise a 7-foot, 1-inch tall, 350-pound guy? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the if you look at the actual disguises, most of which were different, you know, hair and eye and face wear, you'll see that uh, each one was more outrageous than the last. <laughs> and the fact that anyone fell for any of them is really remarkable. But there it is. That's, That's what makes one. it so awesome. That's the future of advertising online, folks. And that is Media Unplugged for this week. Please remember to subscribe to us at iTunes or on Stitcher. And while you're there, please rate the show. It helps other folks to discover us. You can also catch us at SoundCloud, Podcast One, Radio Inc., Media Village, Net News Check, and the American Marketing Association. You can follow Tom on Twitter at Tom Asacker and Mark at Mark Ramsey Media. Send us your questions and comments using hashtag Media Unplugged. If there's a media topic you want us to cover, please tweet us. You can read the show notes and share the show at our website, MediaUnplugged.net. Special thanks to the awesome producer, more of a Lyft producer than an Uber (laughs) producer, wouldn't you say? I think so, yes. Of Media Unplugged, Jeff Schmidt, S-C-H-M-I-D-T, exciting audio for media. You can find him at Jeff-Schmidt.com. For the fantabulous one and only Tom Asacker, I'm Mark Ramsey. Thank you for listening. (laughs) 